Good morning again, everyone, and thank you for attending the 2021 inaugural EGW Utility Solutions Conference. We know how valuable your time is, and we are very grateful that you've chosen to spend it with us today. Before I introduce Scott Kleppe and Scott Cranstuber to speak about the latest technology in gas leak detection, I want to point out a few quick things. First, I want to let everybody know that this session is being recorded and we plan to make them uh, able to be viewed at a later time. Secondly, as you may or may not be aware, we're giving away a door prize for every session throughout the conference. For this class, Sensit Technologies has graciously donated two gift cards valued at $100 each, and we'll be awarding one to each of two winners. We'll choose the winner from the list of attendees to each session, so please make sure you've logged in with your real name and contact info if you want us to be able to reach you to give you your prize. Unfortunately, Microsoft Teams does not allow us to unmute individual attendees, so all of your mics will be muted throughout the presentation. You can still interact with the presenters by asking questions with the Q&A function. You should see a button at the top of your Teams screen that looks like a question mark in a bubble. When you click that button and type in a question, it comes straight to me. At the end of the presentation, we'll have a Q&A session while I read your questions to Mr. Kleppe and Mr. Cranstuber so they can answer them. If we run out of time before getting to your answers, don't worry, we'll save your question and contact you directly next week with your answer. Feel free to submit questions as they come to mind throughout the class and don't worry, when you do so, it won't interrupt the presentation. So we encourage you to send as many as you want as often as you like. Sound good? Okay, great. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce Scott Cranstuber and Scott Kleppe with Sensit Technologies. Scott Kleppe is the President and Chief Executive Offer of Sensit Technologies, which is a leading manufacturer of gas detection instruments for the natural gas industry located in Valparaiso, Indiana. Sensit Technologies is a subsidiary of Halma PLC, an investment group in the UK dedicated to providing a safer, cleaner, and healthy world every day. Scott's been with Sensit since 1984, and in 1999 was named president of the company upon his father's retirement. Today, with over 115 employees in three countries, including Italy and India, and global production to more than 40 countries, Sensit's operation includes sales and service, research and development, and manufacturing. Scott and his wife, Tina, reside in their small farm in Union Mills, Indiana, with their dozens of rescued animals. Scott Cranstuber is the Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Sensit Technologies. Scott is responsible for managing Sensit's commercial activities in the Americas for energy markets, as well as the environmental, fire service, and industrial sectors. Scott began his career in the natural gas industry in 1988, including more than 12 years at Sensit. Active in several national and regional industry trade organizations, Scott is a current member of the Board of Directors of both the Southern Gas Association and Midwest Energy, Energy Association. He's also past chair of the AG Operations and Engineering Associates Managing Committee and is a current member of its Field Operations Committee. Scott has a BS in journalism from Kent State. He and his wife Nancy live in Madison, Ohio with their two dogs and four cats. Thank you both for joining us today. Mr. Kleppe, the floor is yours. Well, thank you. Thank you, Daryl, uh, very much for that uh, excellent introduction. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, more importantly, I really appreciate all the participants that are on here today uh, spending your time with us, and, and hopefully we can give you a little more information about what's going on here at Sensit. I do want to give a call out to uh, Daryl and the EGW team for putting all this together. A lot of work goes into these things, and uh, they've done a, a super job in, in making it happen. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Sensit and uh, who we are, what we've done uh, over the past. Many of you may be familiar with us, a uh, few may not, but uh, you know, we uh, we always like to start out with talking about what our purpose is. Why do we come to work each day? What is it that uh, we expect to do? How do we expect to do it? And what's the results uh, as, as, as we do the things that we do? At the end of the day, not much different than Halma, our parent company. Uh, our job is to protect life, property, and the environment from hazardous gases. That's what we do every day. Uh, we realize that you, our customers, do that every day as well. And so the groups of professionals that we have around the globe, 
uh, think about it and, and make it a part of their daily life to make sure that your job is uh, done easily, efficiently, and safely. But we, we're always into innovation. Uh, we have many new ideas, new products, but we want to make sure that we're able to put something th out there that's deployable, usable by the field and, and actually gives the results that, that you're looking for. Uh, one of the biggest uh, benefits here at Sensit is our culture. Uh, we have been a family uh, since the very beginning of time, and uh, and we work very diligently toward keeping that family atmosphere and certainly those values that are around it. You know, what we hope out of everything that we do is when you have a question, you have a need that you ask us first. Uh, we may not have the solution, but we certainly want to make sure that uh, we can we can be be the person to help guide and and per perhaps even uh, provide the solutions that you need when it comes to gas leak detection. The company was started by my parents. Uh, I'm second generation, of course, then, and uh, started in 1980. And uh, uh, my father always had the dream of uh, running his own business. Uh, and when uh, when the opportunity arose, next slide, Kenny. Uh, we uh, we had a product called GasTrack. Some of you may be familiar with that. Very very successful handheld leak detection device that was developed by a large Midwestern uh, gas utility company. Uh, we uh, we then took those uh, those resources created and uh, and created the organization that we have today. And uh, as as previously mentioned, uh, you know it's about 115 employees around the globe, most of which uh, are here in Valparaiso, Indiana, where uh, we we design and build and manufacture uh, uh, and of course service uh, on these gas detection devices. From a development uh, perspective, we have uh, a team here in Valparaiso, which is uh, really the endpoint for everything that comes out. But we work with uh, a couple of engineers that we have in Minneapolis. We have a dozen engineers that are in India as a result of one of our senior uh, engineers having to leave to go back home and we started something. And then uh, through uh, uh, developing another uh, corporate entity and, and the like in uh, Italy. We, uh, we have uh, four engineers there that, uh, that are specialized in various areas of some of the equipment that you'll see here today. So looking at the chart, you can see we have a great history of innovation when we start uh, from, from a home-based office in 1980, uh, clear through today. Uh, we are going to focus uh, today's activities and discussions on, on those things that, have, uh, that are evolving here for 21, 22 uh, kind of time frame. So uh, uh, it's, uh, it's great to be able to, uh, to invest back in and without you or valued customers, uh, uh, we wouldn't be able to do that. So we greatly appreciate the, uh, the activities that uh, you allow us to do every day. What we're going to talk about first today is, uh, is our sense of gold G3. Uh, when we think about uh, our evolution, uh, you know, it started with a gas track, then we had a small track and almost for those that remember Instamatic cameras, about Instamatic camera size uh, combustible gas indicator that was used in concert. And uh, then we went to UltraTrack, uh, which was a development project with a large utility. And then uh, the first of Sensit Golds. And, and then we had the G2 version. And, uh, you know, and in true timeline, about 10 years later, here we are, we're about to introduce the G3. Next slide. So anyway, uh, we are going to be talking about G3. Uh, we're going to talk about our next generation of leak survey uh, uh, instrument, our PMD2. Uh, we're going to talk about open path lasers, and then we're going to talk about a system that can tie it all together and, uh, and through our GIS 360 uh, uh, networking uh, program. Good deal. Scott, it's yours. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thanks, Daryl and Scott. So I am going to talk about four separate individual uh, products and uh, data solutions that can revolutionize and will revolutionize the way natural gas companies do their leak investigations. I'm going to start with G3. Um, that's a 
the further evolution of the gold product line, as Scott just pointed out, it's been years in the making. Um, it's got a lot of cool features in it. Uh, we've taken some of the best features from our first and second generation of the gold instrument and brought them forward into the G3. So the G3 is going to have G GPS and Bluetooth. Um, it's five sensor capable. It'll have an instrument health meter on board. The overall durability is going to be improved and a lot of data acquisition and data logging aspects to this product as well. So as it says at the bottom, the industry's most widely used and best multi-gas detector just got better with the Gold G3. So when we went about designing the next generation of product, there were a number of things that were design considerations. Again, this, the Gold G3 uh, development really began soon after the introduction, introduction of the Gold G2. You know, that's, that's the way Apple does it and other innovative companies out there. As soon as you release a product, you figure out, start to figure out how you can make it even better. So one of the first things, there's really three aspects to our design considerations. Number one is enhancements for the field tech. For that guy out in the field, the first responder, the leak survey tech, uh, those folks on, on leak investigations every day using this instrument, how could we make it better for those guys? How could we make it more efficient, allow them to do their jobs more quickly and more effectively? The second consideration was partly selfish. How could we build it faster? How could we build it better, more modular, so that it's easier for our manufacturing folks to um, meet demand and get the product out the door, um, meeting all of the quality criteria and those kind of things as efficiently as we could, while at the same time, and I'm in the same boat there with manufacturing efficiency, we wanted to make the G3 easier to maintain in the field so that whether it's the leak survey guy or the first responder or the person in the shop doing calibrations, we wanted to make it easier for them to use and maintain. So that was number two. And then number three, a big advancement. A lot has happened in the world of technology in the last 10 years. Um, you guys all see it every day and all the products we use. So the G3 has, a, has all of that kind of modern technology and communication ability um, built into it. And those kind of things can be great enhancements for the back office folks when it comes to monitoring compliance, uh, work efficiency, workflow, all those kind of things. So those were the major design considerations that went into the G3. We used a concept called Voice of the Customer. That's a real strong program at Sensor Technologies where we do interview uh, customers from across the country and in fact across the world to get their input on what they'd like the instrument to be able to do and uh, how it works and those kind of things. So thinking about that worker in the field, that first responder, here's some of the enhancements we did to make the G3 even better on the job. Um, if folks are familiar with the gas track, and the first generation of the gold instrument, the G3 brings back that old familiar tick wheel that can be used by the, by the technician to pinpoint super small gas leaks as quickly as possible. So the tick wheel's back. The G3's got a two-speed pump. We built in a flashlight. It's got bigger and brighter uh, alarm lights so that it can be seen when it goes into various different states of alarm from around the room. Um, so it can alert co-workers uh, to changing conditions as well with visual indicators. The screen's bigger and better than ever. It can be viewed very well in bright sunlight, outdoors, snowy conditions, um, any of those situations where sometimes you find uh, things like cell phones where you can't see them real well on bright days. The G3 is not like that. The G3 screen is beautiful and, and really shines and, and the information is clearly vis visible. We added some things uh, like auto purging for bar hole testing so that the user doesn't have to remember to purge and clear the instrument between bar holes. There's a number of little convenience features we built into the instrument, again, to make it better 
for the user, better for the uh, first responder out there in the field. Speak into that second aspect of making the instrument easier to maintain, easier to build, those kind of things. Um, the coolest feature on this page is the sensor pump and battery health meter that is going to be in the G3. Um, instead of waiting for a sensor to fail before you replace it, the G3 will be able to give you proactive indicators and keys and cues so that you know um, one sensor or the other is starting to degrade over time and you can proactively make that change. Similarly, with the pump health meter, the G3 has a built-in um, sensor that'll let you know when there's clogging that's happening or anything that can decrease the efficiency of that pump. There's also a, a strong a battery indicator that'll let the user know uh, about the strength and power of their batteries to ensure they can get through the workday or at least that job that they're on right now. So that's, that's one of the keys in terms of uh, long-term performance and maintenance is that health meter. We've also added a long life O2 sensor. For those of you familiar with multi-gas detectors or single gas monitors that measure oxygen, um, O2 sensors tend to die over time. Two, two and a half years after their manufacture, they usually run out of the material that allows them to sense and they die and need to be replaced. The G3 now has a long life electrochemical sensor, so we're confident that the G3 will be able to provide three, four, maybe even five years of life on the O2 sensor. Um, the G3's got a rubberized housing, so it's gonna be more durable. We beefed up the gooseneck, which was a little bit of a weak point that over time it could wear and, and become um, a little less stable on the instrument. So the new G3 has a reinforced, much more durable, much more rigid gooseneck. Uh, the sensors are plug and play. Uh, it's expansion ready for additional sensors, and I'll talk about that in a couple of slides. So the third aspect to the evolution of the G3 were those enhancements I spoke of for the back office. If you think about where the world was 10 or 20 years ago when the original gold instrument came out, yeah, there was, there was data logging that was out there, GPS existed, uh, Bluetooth may have existed uh, when the G2 was invented, but they were all relatively new technologies, not entirely deployable in a, in a compact instrument like this. So now it being 2021, we're able to get a lot more power, a lot more communication ability in the G3, taking advantage of that kind of technology, GPS, Bluetooth, and uh, data logging kind of capabilities. We've also done quite a bit of work with our calibration station. On the screen there, it references, references SC360, that's Smart Cal 360, um, which will provide a lot more compliance data and an improved abil ability to send out alerts to users, again, to proactively let them know when they're due for calibration or other things that may need routine maintenance. Real-time mapping with GIS 360, that's another program I'm gonna talk about towards the end of the presentation kind of the uh, highlight of the whole deal is this GIS 360, which allows real-time mapping and, and uh, back office viewing of the work um, remotely. G3's got a sustainable power supply. It's rechargeable batteries with the ability to use alkaline batteries if that need arises. But with all the features and all the power that's inside the, the G3, the rechargeable batteries, uh, we're really a requirement with this. We needed the power they could provide and and uh, it's a great, really long-term payback device. Instead of throwing away batteries every week or two weeks or three weeks, recharging them and, and saving money in the long run using a rechargeable battery was the way to go. I mentioned Bluetooth. That allows it to be compatible with our gasless leak training device. Future ready, the G3 is future ready. Um, it has the capability to house up to five sensors. So that gives us the ability to add something like an ethane sensor in the future, um, seeing where the industry is gonna go with hydrogen. Maybe there are some kind of a, a sensor that becomes on board on the G3. 
that adds to that discussion around hydrogen injection into the pipelines, CO2, VOCs, NO2, SO2. Those are all possible sensor um, expansion capabilities for the G3. They're not in this initial version that's uh, going to be out later this summer, but there is expandability for the G3 to make it truly future ready. Data information, uh, data management, visualization, calibration, those are all very important aspects to the modernization of the gold series. The data logging capabilities and, and uh, GPS capabilities on the G3 are fantastic. If you think about the G2 instrument that maybe there's a bunch of you in the audience that use that instrument or your people use that instrument every day. It's been a workhorse for us. It's used around the country by more natural gas utilities than any other multi-gas detector out there. It's by far the most widely used. Um, thinking about the technology from 10 years ago, the G2 has capability to house 1,500 records. Again, the, the G2 can house 1,500 records. The next generation, the G3, can house 475,000 records. So it gives a huge capability in terms of data logging, data logging. So natural gas companies can look backwards a week, two weeks, or a month to see what was going on at a particular moment in time. Uh, you'll get a log using our Smart Link 360 uh, program. The information can be transferred from the G3 to the Smart Link 360 on a laptop through Bluetooth communication, and it'll provide um, a lot of sorting capabilities so that if you do need to look backwards and check what was going on in a bar hole or a particular situation, you can look back and see what the readings were at a different point in time. On the left side over here, you can see um, you have the ability when the instrument is set up from its original purpose purchase to have uh, that data logging happen at different intervals. So if you set it up where you want a, a ping of the instrument uh, every 60 seconds, you'll get two and a half years worth of data on the G3 where you can look backwards. So the more frequent the ping, the shorter that um, outlook will be, but it does still give a huge amount of backward capability to look back and see those records. I mentioned Smart Link 360. That's how we get the information from the G3 to the computer using Bluetooth. You can get session logs, bar hole logs, the calibration data, all that kind of stuff is commuted, communicated with our Smart Link 360 program. So I raced through that as fast as I could. It seemed like I was screaming in a race car. I hope it was all clear. We can take questions at the end about G3 or any of these other products, but I want to move into our PMD2. PMD is portable methane detector. That is Sensit Technologies um, leak survey device for mobile and walking applications. It's a, it's a device that's been around for quite a few years. The second generation, the PMD2, will be out really in the next couple of months. Um, and the whole design was around improving the efficiency, accuracy, and speed of leak surveys. It gives a nearly instantaneous response um, so that when leak survey crews are out there pinpointing and grading leaks, they know right away. They don't go past the leak. They get a response right now as they're doing their walking surveys. It's got onboard GPS. It's got data logging. It's got the things I was just talking about that are in the G3. Um, in terms of those tools that can help visualize uh, the data that's out there. Final thing I want to talk about on this slide is that it's methane selective. So for a leak survey device, your crews are out there looking, um, actively searching for methane specifically. So that's what it's going to respond to is natural gas with methane being the overwhelmingly biggest component of natural gas it's going to give an instantaneous response with zero false positives to uh, when you're doing those leak surveys. Here's a look at the user interface. It's very simple. If you have a user that's familiar with our three button interface, whether on the Gold G2 instrument, the Gold G3, um, our 
IRED device. We use that three button interface and the, the use of them is similar from one instrument to the next, but it's a very simple device. Ergonomic, lightweight, it's about half the weight of our original PMD. Um, so it's probably the smallest and lightest leak survey specific device that's out there. Real fast startup. This is just a minute or two to get going from the time the button is pushed to start it. Um, as I mentioned, it's a real ergonomic design, lightweight. We've got a strap that can be worn over the shoulder, around the neck. There's a number of different ways that users can uh, wear the PMD2 to make it comfortable truly for all day use. Detection range, we've got, um, this is an improvement over our first generation. We've got methane selectivity all the way through the range from three tenths up through 100% methane. It's uh, got that kind of de detection range. And as I mentioned previously, you get GPS data on board, that's an option. Um, you can also get relative or absolute readings. If there's a need to um, basically zero out that back background methane that's in the air every day in your particular area, you can do that and just do relative readings, or you can do an absolute reading that, that starts from truly zero methane. Um, like the G3, this integrates with our SmartCal 360 device and um, the calibrations can be done in less than five minutes on the calibration station. So here are just a couple of pictures of, of the PMD2 in action. You can see it's a pretty small device. Um, we've got various probes that uh, can be used as accessories so that you know, the, the work can be done quickly and efficiently out in the field, whether that's bar hole testing, uh, traditional walking leak survey, what have you. PMD2 is a very well-rounded, great device for your walking leak surveys. I'm gonna move on to remote laser detection, um, a pretty hot topic over the last couple of years in the industry. Remote gas leak detectors, the biggest feature for them is they keep your workers out of the gas plume. So in the case of, I'm gonna talk about the LZ50, uh, the 50 in the name is represents meters. So about 164 foot distance, that laser will shoot and bounce off uh, some kind of a reflective surface and come back to the instrument with fast, nearly instantaneous readings of methane only. It's not going to react to other gases that are out there. It's methane specific. So it's a great tool for first responders. It can be used to shine through windows to make sure there aren't hazards before your workers walk into buildings. Um, it's great for leak investigations and the sub, sub, um, supplement leak survey, walking leak surveys. Great for bridge spans, great for can't get in situations. All those kind of inaccessibles is where you want to use something like the LZ series of remote gas leak detectors. We've got the LZ30, which is the small one. It's been on the market for about three and a half years. It's had great success throughout the US and into Europe as well. Um, it's small, about the size of a cell phone. That was our original entry into the remote laser business was the LZ30. So now the LZ50, its big brother, if you will, um, is a, a more full featured device, a great tool for analyzing what's going on in a particular uh, situation. As I mentioned, it's got a 50 meter, 164 foot range. It's got on board target GPS. That's the second bullet there on the left side. Target GPS is something very unique to the industry. No other device out there has it. I'll talk about that in another slide or two. Um, it's photo and video capable, so you can take pictures of your targets. Uh, there are customers out there that are wanting to use this to supplement their corrosion surveys because of the photo and video capabilities on the LZ30. It's got onboard event logs, uh, rechargeable battery again, so you get a lot of efficiency out of it. It'll run for a full workday. Again, it's smart link, or smart link compatible, so the data on the LZ50 can be transferred to a laptop computer for further analysis. And as I mentioned, it should be available in the next month or so. 
it's very, very simple to operate. Um, I'm not going to go through all the details on how to operate the LZ50. There are two buttons and a touch screen. So uh, the two buttons, there's a power button on the front of the instrument that you can see that's right in front of the lady here where I'm circling that turns the instrument on and off and it also turns on the on and off the laser. And then on the front of the instrument, uh, well, it depends on your perspective, front or back, but in the trigger position where your index finger would go is a trigger like that can be used for zooming and enhancing some of the operations for the for the LZ50. And then there's a large touch screen that gives the operator different in information about whether they want to check out uh, logs or photos and videos and those kind of things, they can use the touch screen to get to those different menu items. So target GPS, this is the main thing I wanted to mention when talking about the LZ50. This is really a revolutionary advance in the area of remote lasers. Traditionally, if you're using a remote laser detector and it has GPS on board, that GPS is telling you where the person is standing that's holding the device. Again, with a traditional device, GPS is going to be locked in on where the person is, where the device is, not where the laser is pointing. What target GPS does is gives you, uh, provides the user with a lot more information about the situation. It provides not only the GPS location of the person that's holding the laser, but it also gives um, an indication using an accelerometer on board. It gives an indication of the tilt of the laser and the position on three axis. So it also has a magnetometer on board, so it gives you the compass heading. So not only in the, in the case of the picture there on the right side, we can tell where she's standing. We can tell where she's pointing the laser, how far the laser traveled, uh, what angle, whether she was pointing up at a stack that might be on the upper reaches of that building or pointing it down at the ground. We can tell all those things. And then using our GIS 360 program that I mentioned earlier, we can create a map like this that shows and ensures that those areas critical on the leak survey were actually surveyed. We can tell that the laser was pointed in a particular direction um, that would line up with a particular natural gas company asset that's on the other end of that laser. So it really goes the next distance to providing the coordinates of the targeted asset as well as the coordinates of the technician. Hopefully that's clear. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail on this slide, but basically this slide talks about data. This talks about the acquisition of information that the LZ50 can do and how you can use SmartLink 360 to get those data logs off of the instrument and onto a laptop for analysis. So that leads me into talking about this GIS 360 that I hinted at at the beginning. GIS 360 is a proprietary platform um, unique to Sensit. It's about real-time data management for leak surveys, leak investigations. Any of our communication capable detectors will be able to link up to GIS 360. Um, so that's the Gold G3 that we mentioned, the PMD2, uh, the LZ50, and any future instruments we have that are communication capable. So they have GPS on board, they've got Bluetooth and those kind of things, so they can communicate. Um, this is a program that, that'll be available later this year. Um, it's an application that'll be loaded on smartphones, tablets, uh, computers to take that data from the different devices and allow a lot of work and a lot of um, analysis to be done at the back office. So the natural gas company, their, their overriding goals, their overriding uh, mission, find and eliminate leaks, enhance their network integrity, um, environmental protection, uh, prioritize remediation events, monitor the workflow, and another cool aspect to the GIS 360 is it can accumulate over time 
historical leak information. So if you're using any device, whether it's our PMD that I talked about earlier, our mobile uh, truck mounted VMD series, even the G3, any of these instruments that are used on the piping system will continue to accumulate that historical leak data and can build a historical picture of that section of pipe. One of the aspects that's unique about the GIS 360 is it will have the ability to import you, the particular pipe and asset network of the natural gas company. So instead of wondering if you're standing over the top of the pipe, you'll know exactly where you are and you'll know when using the devices um, that you're actually taking surveys um, on top of the actual asset instead of guessing whether you're on the correct side of the road or not. GIS 360 will, through Bluetooth, any of these devices right now uh, will be able to interface with the GIS 360 through Bluetooth. There'll be seamless instrument handoff. Theoretically, you could have a situation where a leak survey crew is out using the VMD to do a leak survey in a particular part of the the uh, gas system. If they get a hit on a leak that they wanted to investigate further, they could do a seamless handoff from the VMD to either the portable methane detector, the PMD2, or the Gold G3. They could do that handoff so the worker could get out, continue their investigation. All the while, the breadcrumb trail is continuing, the data is continuing to accumulate, so there's no uh, break in the data flow. So it's great for, like I said, having those breadcrumb trails, monitoring high risk projects, high risk areas of the system. You have that seamless handoff from one device to the next. Um, you, I assume most of you are familiar with the breadcrumb trail. Um, in the case of GIS 360, it'd have a green dot where it shows where a particular leak survey would start. And then different dots along the way would color, color coded uh, to indicate alarm events, whether that's yellow or red, whatever threshold the user wants to put in place, they can add a particular um, colored dot so they can color, color code those different alarm thresholds much like we do on, on our vehicle methane detector and PMD2 today. Overall, the benefits of GIS 360 are huge. It's real-time tracking. Um, it'll be able to be done from a remote location so you can verify and watch work that's in progress, see what's been completed, and see what still needs to be done. Um, overall, it improves the efficiency of leak surveys dramatically. I mentioned earlier the historical information and trends. That's huge from customers we've talked to. That's a huge capability to be able to know what happened last year during your leak surveys. Five years ago in your leak surveys, you can identify particular parts of your system that, that might be recurrent problem areas. So that's huge with GIS 360. Um, identifying areas with higher risks. I've mentioned that a couple of times, but truly it gives total visualization across any of the gas detectors that we're using, whether it's our vehicle based or any of our portable handheld devices like the PMD2 or the G3. Again, the GIS 360 is only going to be capable on those devices that have communication abilities. So it's not going to be something we can employ on the G2 or older gold series instruments, but going forward, all of the instruments that Sensit produces are going to have that ability to communicate and provide a, you know, a data outflow so that you can take advantage of these kind of benefits that GIS 360 represents. There's a lot of capability to customize reports um, using this, but uh, there will be some onboard tools that uh, to create those different reports. You can sort the data in different ways to uh, suit your needs. So just to kind of recap quickly, um, I talked about the Gold G3. 
the enhancements we made for the user, the enhancements we made for the back office, and the enhancements we made to keep it in service and maintained longer and easier. Um, next, I talked about the PMD2 and it's uh, laser technology that's on board that can improve the accuracy and speed of walking leak surveys. PMD2 is going to be a fantastic tool for natural gas companies, lightweight, easy to use all day, those kind of things. Uh, next, in terms of hardware, I talked about the gas track LZ50 and that target GPS feature, which really separates it from any other remote laser device that's out there on the market today. Um, it really gives a, a state-of-the-art remote laser gas detector. And then finally, I wrapped it up with the GIS 360 that tied them all together so that you have that seamless handoff from one instrument to the next. Or if you're just using GIS 360 for one instrument in particular, you can do all that data management, the visualization, and the work tracking um, using the GIS platform. That hits everything I had, Daryl. Scott, is there anything I missed? <laughs> no, Cranny, that was a, that was a great job. Thank you. Uh, as, I love as some time everybody, as everybody can tell, we have a lot going on here at Sunset, and uh, you know we uh, we look forward to uh, to partnering with uh, with you, our customers, uh, uh, toward uh, toward showing you these benefits. Well, that's great. We've had some really good questions come in, so um, I will begin to share those now. Uh, first thing, we had somebody comment early on that they're excited to hear you're bringing back the tick wheel on the G3. I think we all kind of knew that was going to be popular, so congrats there. Yeah, um, I want to mention on that one, Daryl, that if you have a user, we the tick wheel was on the original gas track, it was on the ultra track, and the first generation of gold. For the G2, we had to find a different way to do the tick um, because of some of the certifications we needed to go through yeah, the ingress protection yeah the g3 is going to have both capabilities so if somebody's used to using the g2's push button tick they'll be able to use that on g3 if that's what they're used to but they'll also have the added option of the wheel so either way either way works okay great on the g3 um, we had somebody ask what is the accuracy of the gps and how would you log a coordinate? The logging will be automatic depending on how often you ping the instrument um, or ping the location, I guess. Or, or, this, use the, or use the data save feature. Right, this, the C button, a quick push on the C button will give a data save at any time, uh, regardless of the ping frequency. And then the accuracy, the standard that we provide is going to be three meter. We'll have an option uh, down the road for one meter accuracy. So we built that one meter in there as an option for customers that want a little tighter control. Okay. Uh, another question about the G3 is that they wanted to know if the G2 would still be available to purchase after the G3's release. Absolutely. Yeah, and you can see the the original gold. We still sell that sell that today. It's a it's been out for twenty years. There are still customers that love it and keep buying it. We expect to support the GT G two for many years to come. Wonderful. Uh, another comment we received about the PMD was that they're glad to hear the warm up time is cut down. Yeah, completely different technology. Uh, the laser allows us to uh, to be uh, certainly uh, it's it's actually less than a minute. It's uh, it's a very very fast warm up uh, as compared to the uh, kind of warm up that you need with the uh, uh, crystal that is used in the in the current PMD. Okay. Uh, question about the LZ50. How well will it work around bodies of water or on wet surfaces such as pavement? Well, um, pavement, not a problem. 
um, bodies of water when you start talking about waves and things like that uh, that can affect the reflectivity. Um, what I'll say is the instrument does have a reflectivity alert on it and it'll give a, an indication on the screen if there's either low or high reflectivity. Um, but I can imagine that in different circumstances, the impact of waves and water movement could impact the reflectivity. I don't know, Scott, if you have something to add to that. Yeah, no, I, I think some of the other question is, is the fact that the you know, water vapor can tend to be kind of close in signature. And it, it may cause uh, gas to hide a little bit. And uh, so far we've had really good success in, in high moisture areas uh, in, in what we've been doing. Uh, to shoot it out over a lake yet, I can honestly tell you, we probably haven't done that just yet. And, and we'll, we'll definitely have to get back to you on that. Okay. Um, will the ethane sensor in the G3 help to eliminate naturally occurring methane like sewer gas that doesn't have ethane? Will it work like a mini IRED? Yeah, it's not going to have the sensitivity of an IRED. Uh, it, it, uh, it's going to require a larger methane concentration in order to, to determine uh, is, uh, is, is ethane present. It, it's, it's more about, you know, gross identification you know, in, uh, in, in, in potentially the hundreds of parts per million as compared to the hundreds of parts per billion that an IRED can detect. Okay. But yeah, it'll have the capability to clear a decent amount of those naturally occurring uh, situations. Yeah. Uh, just a quick comment. Any of you that have asked a question, if his answers uh, brought up other thoughts, you're welcome to send in follow-up questions and I'll ask those as well. Um, one person wanted to know when the new technologies will be introduced, the G3, the PMD2, and the LZ50. Right now we are in beta testing, so there are probably some people on this call now that their company might be one of our beta testers. For example, the Gold G3, we've got that out at about a dozen utilities across the U.S. that are doing some testing for us to give us that field input. There's so much we can do at our offices and our lab in Valparaiso, um, but getting it out in the field for real life testing is really important. So that's the phase we're in right now on both the LZ50 and the Gold G3, they're in beta testing. So once that finishes, we will bring them back in, make any adjustments that are recommended by the users and get it out to the public. In the case of the G3, we expect to be in production, let's say this fall. Um, we have customers kind of lining up now for the Gold G3. Um, the LZ50 and the PMD2 will probably be sooner than that. Okay. Yeah. Certainly, certainly the, you know, 60 to 90 days kind of thing. Uh, uh, it looks like uh, we should be able to start putting those out the door. Probably closer to the 90 mark. There's still, still some tooling things and things like that that are getting finished up uh, as well. All right, uh, another person asked if the GIS 360 software would be available as a free download. Um, there may be a subset of that that would be available, but full featured, it is not going to be a free download. Okay. Yeah, some uh, of the pricing models for that are still, still to be worked out. Um, yeah, and like Scott said, the, the the download price and those kind of things are still to be worked out. Okay. Uh, how heavy is the new LZ50 or how light, I guess, would be a better way to put it? Um, that's a darn good question. I'll have to get back to him on that. I don't know the exact weight on that. It's in the pictures that we had. It's, it's an instrument I can tell you that um, is lighter than it looks by quite a bit. It feels good in the hand. It's well weighted. Um, we've had, we made sure during the beta testing on that, that we put it in the hands of both your linebacker types and your more petite folks to, to get a good cross section of 
people testing it out and weight's not really an issue with that. And I'll also mention that um, the LZ50 will ship with uh, a strapping uh, system so they can sling it over a shoulder or around their neck when oh. it's not used. But I'll get back to you, Daryl, with the weight on it's that. Couple, it's a couple of pounds, just a little over a couple of pounds. Yeah, great. Uh, the last question that we've gotten so far is from someone that says they current you currently use laser for places where they can't get inside. Do you think FEMSA will begin requiring laser or data logging and tracking in the future? Yeah, it's hard to say. There's an awful lot of things that are coming up in the administration and uh, some of the changes. Um, I got a feeling that there's going to be pick the battles uh, as far as as what needs to get done first. Uh, I think I think there's going to be a higher push on safety and certainly a higher push on environmental uh, activities and, and making that a part of uh, everybody's world. Um, as as far as making uh, laser detection through windows, et cetera, uh, it, it may become kind of one of those uh, best practices that may show up in GPTC, but I'm not so sure it's going to end up in uh, in the full regulatory. No, that and three dollars and twenty one cents will buy you a latte at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I I want to add that I don't see it going into the books the way that the person asked the question. I, there are a lot of uh, variables in remote laser detection and the logging aspects from from one moment to the next. You know, with a, we love lasers. We've got kind of a good, better, best philosophy with our three-step product line with the LZ30 and then the LZ30 with the data app and the LZ50. They're all great devices. Um, and they're great devices to supplement a leak survey program. But as a standalone, there are a lot of variables, again, from moment to moment. You never know exactly what part of the plume you're going through. Um, so it's really hard to tell, and it would be really hard to make a decision solely based on a laser reading. You know, you've got those situations you can't get to the, can't get to the source with a PMD or a G2 or something like that. Your only option for a bridge crossing or something like that might be, you know, the LZ50. Um, but we think that there are some, there are quite a few variables. I guess that's what I would say that can impact what a particular reading at a particular moment in time might look at, look like. Wonderful. Um, last question so far would be, um, what is the standard length of warranty on each of the new units? Since it does a two-year warranty on all of our all of our instruments, um, many customers elect to go with a longer warranty where we can build in and and make the instruments a little more friendly in terms of long-term maintenance. But the standard is two years. Wonderful. All right. Well, that's everything we've received so far. Um, I'll give it another 60 seconds or so if anybody has any last questions they want to send in. Now, just in conclusion, again, everybody, thank you for participating and uh, uh, allowing us to have a great portion of the day. Hey, thanks for the great questions and, uh, you know, the attentiveness. Daryl, you and your team, way to go. Um, fantastic. And, uh, and Cranny, thanks for uh, making this a uh, great presentation on our behalf. And by the way, happy uh, 20th anniversary to the folks at EGW. I didn't That's get That's right. Of, hey, thanks, get, guys. Send me a piece of cake or something. I didn't <laughs> make well, everyone, that brings us to the end of this session. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. You can see on the screen there, there's an email address, events at egwusa.com. If you have any questions specifically about what you've seen during this conference, this session or any others, or if you just want to ask about the conference in general, please email us at that address. Uh, you can also reach out to your regular um, EGW territory manager or call our office, or if you happen to be in an area where EGW doesn't sell Sensit, please reach out to your Sensit distributor or contact Scott and his team at the factory. 
Um, also want to remind everyone that you are automatically entered to win a door prize. It's one of two hundred dollar gift cards in this class, so we will announce those winners soon. Um, and Scott, Scott, any, even any final comments? Thanks again for participating, everybody. I've got the two Amazon cards here on my desk. If we don't hear from anybody in the next little while, I'll spend them. <laughs> well, thank you both for your insights and for being here, and a huge thank you to all those who attended. We hope to see you all in the next session. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye. Great job.